her brother <laughs> is an attorney. She's an attorney as well, but her brother was representing one of the landowners. Um, it's actually the Gannons. Um, so there is some question of conflict of interest, but she's since cleared that up. So it shouldn't be an issue. Do, do we have the statistics so far on uh, how many of the landowners are signing on and those who are not? Resisting. We have a pretty good estimate, and we're thinking it's somewhere around 20% of the easements have been signed. Are signing on 20%? Yeah, have signed on at this point. The rest uh, are still being negotiated with. So I guess we'll, the wisdom that we've heard from other groups that have fought pipelines is that you only need 10% of the landowners to hold out in order to win and, not, and stop it from being constructed. Um, so what we're really gearing into, and Kathy's helping out on this, is doing a lot of outreach to the landowners, um, sending letters. Um, it was a lot of trouble to find a full list of them um, because it's not public. Well, it is public information, but it's not made readily available. So we had to do a lot of work to, to pull that list. But I think in the next Cheryl few weeks, we pretty much got that together. Didn't yeah, she? one of our coalition the, partners. Excuse me, is that damage limit? Still in effect, what they've had like two hundred forty-nine thousand. Yeah, the liability. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, it's twenty-five. What is it? Two hundred fifty thousand for the entire state. That's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's not a drop it's in the bucket. That's a paper towel. It's still be a hundred times that. Totally. It's a paper towel to soak up the ocean. Yeah, exactly. No, they, I don't know how they can let that stand. There's no way. You yeah. dump that on taxpayers. Yeah, so we add at least three more zeros to it, and then we'll even talk whether we're well, we tried in the to ball correct some of that by pushing the reform, reform the eminent domain law for this kind of project, but it didn't get. Yeah, yeah. it was just there was some time, I guess, to get it. Through. Well, there wasn't political will to get it through, no. even among the, the two that How proposed long it. How long did it take right? to get the ten cent gas? Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it didn't. It would, it would have been passed if they wanted it. Yeah. Do we know about what the time frame would be once the hearing begins? Is that a matter of days or weeks? Or, or what they set aside happen? November 12th through December 2nd. Okay, so and from what I read in the schedule order, um, I don't think they've really decided how they're going to do it. Okay. Right. So it could be one hearing that lasts two weeks long. It could be two weeks <coughs> in a hearing at each county um, along the pipeline's path. They could do it electronically and have people, you know, Skype in or Google Hangout in, um, video camera in. So, at some point between November 12th and December 2nd, they will be doing. Well, what they've uh, been showing hearing. on the news is like they've already made up their mind. They're dropping these pipes all over the place. Is it they're not doing that for nothing. Yeah, just more locations besides Newton that uh, they're being stockpiled. Well, Jasper County is is the main one, and I think there is. I can't remember the other location. What I heard recently is that it's also um, down in Southeast Iowa and Lee County at the okay. Keokuk Airport. Um, okay. They're going to start stockpiling. Which sure. is a <coughs> if you were a business owner, that's a tremendous risk unless you had some absolutely tremendous risk. Somebody they're going they to have some indicating to you, yeah, some assurance that it would go through. But, but it's I go still, through. I don't think. I, whoever gave them that assurance, I don't think they expected what we're doing. I don't think they expected people would wake up and pay attention and resist like we're doing. So I'm really hopeful that that we're on, like, we kind of got the beast on the run a little bit, at least. So. Well, I was kind of hoping when I came in this room that I wouldn't be able to fit in here. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was hoping for. Yeah. We had interesting experience in Kellogg. Yeah. That was three months. <laughs> I, mean, to I me, know they don't running know this pipeline over your watershed is like putting a toilet over your dining room table. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of that. <laughs> exactly. Where, no, I love to fish and I want clean water. And you know, where are you folks living? Yeah, we don't have do. clean water. Oh, oh yeah. well, no, it's, it's been getting worse all the time. Where do you live? Please? That's not going to help anything. Do you think it's, it, people in the urban areas just don't feel it affects them very much? Because it's a, they, you think they think it's a rural issue? It's just like almost everything else. They're busy and they don't. Okay, thanks. Okay. It's too can't do everything. Yeah. Too complicated, too convoluted. They don't understand. They don't understand and they just, you know, it's going to happen anyway. 
I'm not sure they don't understand. I just don't think they pay attention. That could be too. Yes. It's not a hard thing if you think about just a general Yeah, if it's not in my neighborhood, I don't care. I don't want to bother with it. It's funny because we sat even then. We were about ready to wrap up, and then people just came up to us and said, Oh, you guys about the pipeline? Where do I sign up? What do I do? I, and the people well, just started to yeah, spread word. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very, very Three crowded event. Yeah. 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 And the American Legion, too. Yeah. And then the motorcycle State. started rolling in. But <laughs> people started to just come up to us and say, what are we doing? I agree with you. I think that's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 I went to a meeting in Ankeny. 25 people. One commissioner was there. Yeah, he was signed off and reported to the teacher for action. To the audience. And then, I think in a couple weeks here, we're going to go back and have a strategy session. They were asking hard questions on it. Yeah, like like Mayflower and uh, show people all these yeah. what can really happen. Yeah, and it's yeah. Like up in it, Michigan, it happens. Yeah, the Kalamazoo yeah. River is still yeah. That, that's going to be a mess for years and years. Yeah. And the, the yeah, and the Gulf Coast is a. There's still either. oil coming up out of yeah. the Gulf from from that uh, Deep Horizon rig. So I'm curious have you have you talked to like any of your neighbors about it, or do you have a sense of how okay. other people and a little how where I you mean, I mentioned it. it. I ask them if they know what the Bakken pipeline is. They, well, I don't know. So then I tell them about it. They don't okay. have an opinion. <laughs> Help them out. Help them yeah. out. <laughs> just a little bit of a nudge. <laughs> I just, I can't understand how you can have a private oil company from another country come through here with their pipeline and have everybody just say, oh, that's, that's just fine. I, I don't understand. Well, they money. Money. Got some you're really going to get all these deep jobs. Pockets. Money. All yeah. these, these jobs. Politicians. And it's going to give you a job. So no, therefore, those jobs are temporary. Well, well they're, but they're not. So people are thinking, oh, I'm going to have this job. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. And, right. you know, it's like, oh, good. They're going to give jobs to these people. That's good. And they the, the pipeline on. No big from. deal. But I think but, they also, like, they really hammer home this idea of energy independence, and like they call into question how we're all dependent upon oil to live our lives. So how dare we challenge yeah. this well, we proposal? Are dependent right? on water. <laughs> yeah. Well, how dare we challenge that? Do, you, do they ever think that maybe there are alternatives to fossil fuel, and that also creates lots of jobs? Exactly. Yeah. I, I like the idea about just direct comparison of which are we more sincerely dependent on oil or water. That, that's an intriguing idea. And, yeah. it, you know, to drive home the threat. You can live without water, water, but you cannot live without water. Yep. I like that. I really like that. Mm -hmm. see yeah, just ask California. Yeah, yeah, see, there you go. They have a natural disaster, and we're trying to create one here in Man Made. Well, they have they have a natural disaster and an oil spill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they got, they got the boat. <laughs> they, 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 I can't remember who it was, but somebody thought they should build a pipeline from the Midwest to California. For water, for water. Well, we got to sell our water. They tried to buy water out of Lake Superior, Minnesota, and they didn't want that. <laughs> we yeah, visited friends in LA yeah, last so. year, and they told us we had to bring our own water. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. If it, if anyone wants our water, even because it's so polluted. Right? Yeah, I mean, we got over 700 impaired waterways now. What's what's up with we this? Can, I mean, we can take a lot of dirty water out there. We have any clean water, but we got dirty water. Um, so one, one promising thing, we aren't really at all alone in this fight, I'd say. Uh, just this past weekend, I don't know if you all saw, but there was a big protest in St. Paul. Anyone see this? Yeah, uh, I was there. That was freaking was awesome. Cool? Caitlin and I went. That was uh, awesome. <laughs> so all together, there was probably like 30 people there who were fighting the Bakken pipeline that joined us. Um, so pretty strong showing. But 5,000 uh, from across the Midwest, so like Nebraska, South Dakota. And Canada. Canada, yeah. Wisconsin. Canadians? Canada. Yeah, Michigan. Canadians from Alberta right. came down. Came down. Because, you know, as you know, the First Nations, some yeah, of the tribes from Minnesota and uh, others that are directly affected by the KXL or tar sands, yeah. you know, they came down to well, uh, to sands join us. Kind of, since oil has dropped, they're not pushing that wide as 
No, but but they're pushing the ball in here. But the tarpons. Yeah. And and they're still and they're still fragging. Oh yeah. But but these are five thousand people who are yeah. all dedicated to doing the same thing we're doing. Yeah. Right? Um, stopping a pipeline in the community, um, fighting back against the fossil fuel industry. Was it the big park in St. Paul? Uh, uh, we it was uh, whatever the on the riverfront. So yeah, there's a, a landing, just a big walkway on the riverfront. Where they lined everyone up, so they did it in blocks. Um, the indigenous community is right at the front of it because you know often they're on the front lines of these fights. Then it was the youth. Um, then I guess uh, frontline fighters is how they termed it. So like farmland, or farmland owners, uh, landowners, folks like us in Iowa, and Kathy, who are fighting pipelines in their communities, and then everyone else. So they wanted to be representational of what's happening. What was the response? Was there, was there some, some other people there that didn't want to be there? Like the governor or... No, well, there were politicians, yeah. but they were they were on our side. Right. Keith Ellison spoke. Um, you know, Keith, Keith, that's what I was thinking yeah. of, too. Yeah. Well, they've got some liberal. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they do yeah, in Minnesota. Yeah, they got some good people up there. If it had been in Wisconsin, you wouldn't have any politicians. But in Minnesota, <laughs> they've got quite a few liberal. But this is an interesting topic because there are some people who are very conservatives are also very much against this because of yeah. the eminent domain issue mainly because of yeah. you know the protecting landowners' rights and less less government uh, interference. interference. And in this way it's almost the government's lack of interference in you know the pipeline company and uh, and kind of allowing it to happen to us. So it's, oh, it's yeah. been an interesting mix of political climate that's really involved in this. Uh, my dad's a Republican, he's very against <laughs> yeah, Well, and I think people that are directly involved, yeah. are going, you're not going to find that many that are supporting it. Yeah, Bold but Nebraska is, yeah, Bold Nebraska is one of those groups that really stand up. And they, they got it done there. They had 10% holdouts for the KXL, and that was enough to stop it from going through Nebraska. So yeah, that's why there's a lot of hope yet, and we have still time to stop this. Is that you know only 20% of landowners are actually How much pressure are they putting on the farmers? Yeah, that's pretty oh. I mean, oh. I know they're pressure to really decide. Yeah, and some of it is just plain nasty. But who's putting uh, talking to the landowners? So Should it's say it's not maybe a good idea. Well, it's us. Yeah. We are. Yeah. yeah. But we're trying uh, to catch up. You're playing catch up because because the the, the companies ETP people were out there at, at the meeting that we had in Newton for the Jasper County, the IUB and the ETP folks together to present. It was only informational. It wasn't to gather our opinions. It was so they could give us information, which felt very exciting. And out in the lobby, when you walked in, well, first of all, there's a Dakota Access or ETP representative greeting you and giving you the fancy slick brochures. And then when you go in, they're providing donut and coffee for you. I took the coffee, but not a donut. <laughs> um, and um, then inside, they they presented, you know, they took all through this packet of information about all the benefits. And then, then they allowed people to ask questions, but not to voice their opinions. So it was, oh, and then they were also giving away trinkets outside with their brand. And the t-shirts. And it was like a trade show. Oh my God. And and they, and they had they had land representatives right out there. They said, now when we get done with this meeting, if you're a landowner and you you've been you've gotten the letter like like my husband and I did that you're on the route, you know, there's a land representative out there right now that you can talk to. So they got to everybody first and and hard. And we've been really trying to figure out who are these people that have been contacted and how do we catch up with them? Yeah, and I think. Like another point, they were they were talking with folks even before anyone had heard about the proposal, right? And that was back yeah. in July of 2014, so almost a year ago. Yeah, before it got exposed. Started. Some uh, of my neighbors have already negotiated. They signed easements, and they've been given checks that they're told they can cash and keep whether the thing is approved or not. Oh, there's the deep pockets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But also, 
Um, there's question about whether or not any of these easements that have been negotiated are even legal. Um, I don't have a, a ton of details on that because I'm not a lawyer. I printed out and, the information that Ed Fallon sent today. Yeah, it looked really them, but, useful. And I have those, but I couldn't read them in this light, and they're kind of long. So that was, and, I'm going to study up on Yeah, that. another question, you know, if they sign an easement and get the check and the thing doesn't go through, what happens to that land that they signed off, that they signed away? Do, yeah, does the company still have some right to it? No, I don't, I don't think, okay. I don't think they have any. Like to grow say, their tomatoes? <laughs> <laughs> Put GMOs on? <laughs> yeah. I hope not. Well, and I think one of the things that's been suggested that the letter that we're writing to landowners uh, is that, that we suggest that people consider if they've signed, you know, we want them to know what their rights are, and if they have signed an easement, that they could rescind that um, if they felt they had signed under duress. I think this right. is I'm supposed to be. Uh, there's not a super clear answer on that. Um, it'll depend on whether or not it's under a waterway or the specific negotiation that the landowner does with the, the company. Anywhere between four and eight feet is what I've heard. Um, so I don't think they have any understanding of what tiling means when they came into the estate. Um, and even with the rivers, they say they're going to go eight feet under. Um, that case in Glendale, Glendive, Montana, where you know there's a pipeline under yeah. the Yosemite, and it was completely exposed at the point that it started leaking. So they can dig it however far <laughs> down they want, but you know, there's erosion, there's yep. a lot of water flowing over Bolt the Bolts are going to... <laughs> pop loose and yeah. Oh well, if there's any shifting under the soil. Yeah, if there's too, a I mean, if there's an earthquake. Kind of or something, oh. if, if there's an earthquake yeah. or there's fracking in the area that can oh. cause earthquakes, pop, leak. Take a flood, you just wear that bank down to nothing, and a big tree come along there and cut that pipe in half like it wasn't even there. Another, uh, my, another of the Gannon neighbors stopped by today, Dan's brother, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> to, to, to say hello, and, and I, I asked him if he, you know, he, he, he wanted, he, he said, well, I've seen you in the paper a lot lately, so <laughs> um, we just talked about this project a little bit, and um, he says that although a former um, supervisor of the land that they are now farming had given Dakota Access permission to come in and stake out the route. I had always meant to walk down. I could kind of see where the stakes were, but I was going to walk down and look at them at some point. He says, nope, can't now because I pulled them out. <laughs> so the, the, land, the land changed ownership in the, in the new and The new owners went and pulled them out. So um, huh. they also said that... Um, I forget where I was going with this, but we were talking about the... I mean, I think that's part of the broader question of whether or not these easements are even legal yeah. is like ownership changes over, people rent out their land, yeah. who actually owns this land, who signs, it's not, it's not very clear um, who who's in charge and who has the right to actually negotiate that easement rate. Right? So if this uh, council, what is it, the energy people or whatever, right, they're supposed to be deciding the The, the utilities board? Yes, mm -hmm. the utilities board. Say they decide to pass this thing, is there going to be an appeal? Will you be able to appeal their decision or is yeah. it final? It becomes a, a civil case. Um, Take it to court. And then it goes to court, to court and then it goes to Supreme Court and they throw it out because they're under the same guise as the rest of these politicians. Right. Um, so, I mean, that's why, like I said at the beginning of this, the legal strategy isn't our only, our only bet, the only thing we're invested in. We're doing local organizing. Um, right. County level organizing to get the board of supervisors and local government on our side on this and voicing their dissent to the utilities board. Um, also, I think now that we have the scheduling order and time frame, um, the question of direct action is really pertinent, and um, bringing that forward is important. I'd like to see some of these legislatures, even though Branstad told them to stay out of it, I think they should get in it. Because if it's on a level in Washington, it should certainly be on a level in Iowa. Yeah, at this point, because the session has ended, it would have to be a, ses a special session. Yeah. And he hasn't decided if he's going to call on to, to deal with the budget things that he doesn't like. Well, he doesn't. 
don't see much hope of getting special session. Well, they're supposed to be representing what they want. It's not going to go to this. Because he hides from every big issue there is doesn't mean the legislature should. And, you know, they weren't hiding. At, like There was a few leaders, for sure, throughout the session that stood up and said some things. Dan Kelly out of Jasper County. Um, Bob, uh, Rob, Bobby Kaufman, he, he uh, was really fighting against it from the eminent domain angle. Rob Hogue took a leadership role. Um, there was a lot of Republicans who were kind of under Bobby Kaufman's wing in terms of supporting the legislation he put forward. Um, so there was there was some heroes, but at the end of the day, there wasn't the political will to get it done. Um, it was sort of the situation I heard is that. Rob Hogue in the Senate says that um, Gronstall, the Senate Majority Leader, won't bring this to a vote unless it passes out of committee in the House, and then the committee leader in the House says they won't bring it to a vote unless it's, or won't pass it out of committee unless it's brought to a vote in the Senate. So just like some go. nonsense back and forth, um, shifting the blame elsewhere because no one wanted to do anything. But again, that's why legislative and legal, we're going to intervene and participate in this process from those angles, but there's a lot to be done on a local level in terms of making sure landowners don't sign easements, all of that. That's way more important, to be honest. Um, the, one of the bigger arguments in the square is going with my neighbor. He was saying that. Uh, one thing he's, you know, he, he doesn't like the pipeline at all, of course, but he says it is a shame that the, the truck and rail transport is all hogged up by the oil industry, and he'd like to see some of that freed up for grain uh, transport. And again, that's been a big argument of the pipeline company that, well, this is safer and it will free, it, you know, it, it could free up, they, I think they use the word, it could free up rail traffic, but actually they've never said that they're going to transport less by rail or truck at all. They've just said, you know, they, they've said that it could do that, but nobody will say that they will transport less those ways. I, we all believe we have reasonably <laughs> they're just going to have more capacity to transport now. Yeah, this isn't like a either or situation. This is like a, either we have rail transport or we have rail transport and pipeline transport. They, because they energy still want to take the additional and send it to other countries. Yeah, which I guess ties into the broader question of profit. things like so the more the uh, American, TPP the and all of the trade deals that we're talking about that are going to open up global markets to ship our products and exports there. That's exactly what the question of domestically produced oil. You know, they're going to produce. They want to produce as much oil so they can ship it overseas. <laughs> And that's what this the line is from North Dakota in the Bakken region to Illinois. There's already a lot of pre existing pipeline infrastructure from Illinois all the way down to the Gulf to refineries there. So um, they have their route. And also, Trans Canada proposed a pipeline from North Dakota to Canada. So then we're talking about will they have access to tar sands so they can just convert these pipelines and have Keystone, essentially, if they build this. So um, there's a lot of uncertainty about their intentions beyond even the context of Bakken crew, right? Explain that again. They, they would take the tar sands? Yeah, so um, the oil, Bakken pipeline oil. itself goes Bakken. from Williston, North Dakota, to Potoka, Illinois. Yeah. Uh, TransCanada proposed the upland pipeline from Williston, North Dakota, northward to Canada pre-existing pipeline infrastructure. Um, it's They're saying it's because they need to transport Bakken crude north and export it out of Canada. Um, but if they have that whole set of easements and pipeline infrastructure, they could either build a new pipeline on those existing easements or convert it to transport tar sands the way that they want to with the Keystone pipeline. So we could be part of the Keystone? Yeah. Yeah. Literally. I think there's a lot of pipeline fighters out there who say this is the next Keystone, this is the next Keystone, but literally. 
Yeah, really. Well, they keep talking about energy independence, and they're saying that's what this stuff is. And, you know, yeah, right. And they and, and fracking, which both are just. Have you seen the commercial about the the nicely dressed lady walking through these clean looking environments, and it has the illustrations in the back. Of, oh, this clean looking drill going down and them cleanly and safely <laughs> bringing the people. oil up. It's like I can't wish from some. I've they were talking it. about fracking. I oh, yeah. what, uh, okay. what industry is it actually put out by? But the oil the, it's an oil, oil company. company. Yeah, yeah, it's it's flags in the background, <laughs> American <laughs> flags, and it talks about the future. <laughs> Shit. And we're we should talk energy to Barbara back in California. She doesn't say <laughs> they, that. They do refining and uh, the tar sand, or she sent an exploratory crew to where they were fracking um, and not fracking, refining the tar sands, and they're incredibly toxic, incredibly dirty, and they end up with a very light powdery uh, 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 residue left over. And they're saying uh, what the city that. Her crew uh, went to. Uh, you can see when just the breeze came. There was mounds and mounds of the residue of the tar sands, and when the breeze came up, it just made it dusty, dusty oh. air. And the nurses, the nurse association, are so against it because they are on the front line seeing the health issues. They, uh, she said that her crew saw a group of children playing on a playground and a softball. When the wind came up, they all rushed away. So the environmental impact is just incredibly worse in a way that well, in northern oil. in Oklahoma and northern Texas, they've got minor earthquakes now. Yeah, like they've yeah. never had. Yeah, and they come out all these advertisements saying it is a crack. <laughs> and, 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 and they've convinced a lot of these people in Oklahoma. It's the same in Ohio. There was never any yeah. quakes in Ohio until. Uh, the and the frackers came in. No, that wasn't the fracking. That was the deep injection wells. Yeah. So they started taking the fracking waste and burying it, you know, thousands of feet underground, disturbing the geology. And that's what causes these earthquakes in eastern Ohio when there isn't any Ohio, reason for them to happen. In Ohio, but not in Oklahoma. And yeah. Texas. yeah, no faults there, so why yeah. should... <laughs> and they've convinced a lot of those people in Oklahoma. Well, that's... Who are, let's... Well, the facts. <laughs> We talk Are we about going to compare educational systems? <laughs> <laughs> One ridiculous thing that I heard about with fracking is uh, in Pennsylvania, there was an explosion on a fracking rig. And to do like a PR cover up, the company paid for free pizza for the entire community. Oh, yeah. Like through Domino's or something. <laughs> no Bach and well, no someone, pizza. People were killed, though, right? Yeah. I can't. I can't remember. Yeah, that's not ridiculous. It's, I can, it, it's, it's different uh, Barbara Bach was making her pick her Baxter. I think when I talk about climate justice, though, that's this is what I mean. We're talking, we have a pipeline coming through Iowa, but we have to think about what's happening at the beginning of that route and what's happening at the end of that route. Um, in North Dakota right now, uh, communities are unraveling because of the population booms from the oil workers. There's increased sexual violence, sexual assault, crime, human trafficking, human trafficking, all of that. And then at the other end, what Kayleen and I heard from uh, Emma Lockridge, who lives in Detroit, um, this is a little different scenario, but there's a tar sands refinery in Detroit, and her community, um, well, she's on, she had to get her kidney replaced. Um, there's like dozens of people on dialysis, there's cancer happening. So um, many deaths that are just out of the ordinary. And that area. what's yeah. even worse is in that, Detroit? Yeah, yeah, Marathon, paid all of the white people for the value of their houses so that they could leave, but the black community was left there oh, um, to, nothing. to live next to this refinery without they got any shafted. recourse. Uh, so then that makes me wonder what's going to happen at these refineries in Texas, what's already happening there. Oh, it's already, yeah. We're only going to continue to feed those impacts if we let this might not happen in our state. And then the medical evidence, I would just think that could be glommed onto and brought forward and shown to the people if they start putting that but the in the But the trouble news. of it is, unless you can show what happened to your kid or your neighbor, it's really hard to get people to realize this is happening to real people. 
But if you're in a geographic region near something like a refinery and uh, cases yeah. of cat the cancer are extraordinary high, the same exactly. kind of cancer, yeah. I mean, people can take that information. You don't have to say anything else. Doesn't there seem to be some connection? But yeah. yeah. She said her zip code is the worst polluted zip code in all of Michigan. We let this go through our state. We're party to that. Kind yep. Of thing. Contributing. Not in Michigan, but in Texas. I mean, that, no, but that uh, kind yeah. Of yeah. Thing. yeah. yeah. So, the same, yeah. same dirty mess. Yeah. And the yeah, thing is, a, when you have when you have commercials saying how clean and wonderful it is, and they they have the millions and millions of dollars to you know put that commercial on several networks and you know inform everybody who has nothing but TV as their only form of ever any kind of communication. And a lot of times it's certain networks. Um, any <laughs> networks are owned by corporations. You know, that, yeah, you yeah. don't get the truth. That a lot of people have no other news except yeah. that. Well, and they don't pay any in attention. in Iowa with the water, the lawsuit. There are ads on TV now that are really quite right. interesting That's on water. An and yep. It's going to happen with the oil here. Both sides coming out just like that. Yeah. I mean, it's like anytime something happens, like you were mentioning those uh, earthquakes in Oklahoma that they never had before and so on. Every time something like that happens, the oil company pays the PR people to say, we need more research. We can't, you know, it's, no, that's not right. We need more research. Yeah. That's their answer for everything. Yeah, and then the research is skewed towards their view anyway. Yeah, the people who are like, on the front lines of these earthquakes who are telling this story about, you know, there's never been any earthquake in my community until they started doing such and such. Their story is getting validated. Yeah. Well, you can't work, but you gotta go through it. It takes years to do all this testing, which is their goal. Do you all know about free speech or Tom Hartman? You know who he is? Yeah, yeah, I know Tom Hartman. So we're talking about media, and that probably understand free speech is donor supported, not corporate. So uh, you get real news, you get yeah. information. Democracy uh, now. Democracy, yeah. Amy Goodman. Yeah. I mean, if we could contact these people, they did. Tom has a call-in program. Uh, it, it might start making uh, our situation more known because it probably isn't covered in the media like we would prefer. Well, I, you know, I'd say that's actually one of the places where we've been very successful in fighting this is through the media and getting our stories out. I think in the beginning, we saw in the Building Register that they were only, they were essentially publishing the press releases that were coming from the oil company. Yeah. But now, we've seen so many letters of landowners who are against this from citizens that are against this. Um, oh, we had a good reaction from the Tomorrow Register to our board. We yeah. Got, um, I don't think we got exactly what we were looking for, but we, we got a Sunday call. So mm -hmm. it was good. Yeah. We have some folks on our side, and I got think. Just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's proud of this. He is proud of it. So when is the energy board supposed to make their decision? Uh, November 12th through December 2nd. Uh, time, that's our time frame. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, it, the hearing the same, could take December place 6th. over that entire time frame. Do you know how long November 12th to when? Uh, December 6th. Like I, I assume it would be at the end of the hearing. Uh, it would be the time okay. I think okay. make, oh, the, the, the hearing would close with them with their decision. So we should know by Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, yeah. <laughs> well, darn, I was going to invite everybody out to my place where we could overlook the site that you that would have gone through to celebrate, but it's going to be too cold up on Lake Hill by that time. <laughs> if it was spring, I was going to suggest that. But did they legalize fireworks? Or not? Um, I don't. I, have the perfect yeah. kill. I don't think that one made, made it out either. <laughs> there there are so many bills that didn't make it out because they were too busy focused on trying to. That happens every fight each other on the budget. Yeah, <laughs> and especially the school funding part. Well, you know Grant's just going to be totally Yeah. What's the best thing people can do? 
Yeah. Um, so you talked about how you were talking to your neighbors. I think beyond talking to your neighbors, getting them to sign on to a petition like that is super important so that they can get looped into updates um, and events that are happening, all of that stuff. Where do so, we get a, the, the petition form? I, I have some that I can share with you. This is it. Um, Surely will. Um, also, making sure you have your objection sent into the utilities board if you have it. No, I've done that. You, you, you're you, set. You don't need to do it more than once. No. Well, I mean, I you can. Oh, uh, that's right. Something I was going to ask you. Do we know what the count is now of oppositions compared to supports? Because when we first met as a coalition, somebody mentioned that the utilities board had commented that there was some issue they had where they had X number of letters coming in and it just was the, the biggest thing they'd ever seen. And I wonder if we've talked it yet. Um, I can't. I, I, what, you Earlier know, you I said it was over a thousand. So I have at least eight hundred on my desk waiting to submit them. There's already a good nine hundred to a thousand objections submitted to the utilities board compared to only about three hundred letters of support. Uh, plus so two thousand objections versus three thousand or three hundred letters of support is where we're at. I think a rough estimate. But these are objections that I can share with you. Also, you, letters, writing one? letters to the editor. Yeah. Oh, later, okay. after I talk to him, I think I need to get a lot more information. Yeah. I have some fact sheets, too, if you want. Okay, I'll go ahead and give you that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> These are the fact sheets that we've been using. Um, so you fill in your the you nature of your one? objections. Yeah. What's that? Do you have another one? Yes. Yeah. You have a couple of oh no, that's the last one. Sorry, I can. If I have your email on that list, though, I can. Uh, Somebody else want this? No, I have plenty of those. It's the fact sheet so, that you want to. Yeah, those are three like super easy things: petition, objections, and uh, letters to the editor. Beyond that, um, we're looking to plan meetings across the state. Um, I'm willing to come speak other places or talk to anyone about why this is a bad idea in different parts of Des Moines, if you have like a congregation or that sort of thing, um, it's another way to spread the word, I would say. Um, but yeah, keep keep in touch and you know, keep on fighting. It's not a done deal. Got a lot more uh, held to raise. I actually have an idea for a, a visual, but I need some more materials to do it. The big Iowa map of the Capitol, mm -hmm. take black poster board, cut, uh, cut it into so it looks like just blobs coming out, and then take, I have, you know, paper towel tubes, stick them together, run it across, diagonal, oh, put those so black poster board blocks. cutouts underneath it to make it look like an oil spill. Yes, do it. Let me and then take a picture of that and post that online and... And then uh, send that around. Yeah. That's so awesome. yeah. And I like how you will be done with the sure. recycled yeah. material. Do you have another one? Yeah. 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 We're not together. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> We're not okay, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. What'd you say? Um, so have access to how about, how about idea. a human chain along the route? <laughs> you like you. We'll have to call on all the regional partners. You know what I'd really like to do, honestly, is I'd like to get Chuck Grassley and Joni Armst together in room, together right now, and say, Hey, Joni, Chuck, come here a second. You know, name half of the counties, you two together, name half the counties that this pipeline's going through since you voted yes. <laughs> Let's see how much research you actually did. Right. Because I bet without some flunky running and getting them a chart, they couldn't do it. I agree. Um, oh, I had a thought, but I lost it. I um, okay, so no research. I think we've been talking about a lot of the downs downsides and the way that ETP is winning, but I think, you know, from what I've seen at the different meetings that I've held, we were at Boone a in Boone County a couple weeks back at the fairgrounds for a meeting, and there was 50 people there, all of them opposed to the pipeline, about a dozen landowners who were, like, very angry about it. So I don't I don't think we're, we're losing or that there aren't a lot of people who don't care. I think there are a lot of apathetic people in Des Moines, but um, 
when it comes to the counties that are impacted, people are outraged. Well, and, 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 you know, these people have had their part for generations.